Hey everybody, welcome back once again. In this episode today, we're going to talk about grid design or grid system in design. And uh, what I'm referring to when I'm talking about grid is, is it's a system for designers to basically create order out of chaos. It's a, a very um, highly visual geometric modernist approach uh, to page layout where you're basically visually making sense of information in kind of a hierarchical structure. Now, I know it's a lot, uh, but th when I talk about this, this, this school of design really started uh, post-World War II. Um, kind of in the late 40s, early 50s by designers, Swiss designers like Emil Rutter and Joseph Bueller Brockman, who at the time were really, uh, you know, these were all modernist guys and they were kind of coming up to the with these new approaches towards uh, page layout, typography, etc. This is kind of the same school of design that brought Helvetica out. Um, There's a font that, you know, we use all the time on computers now. Uh, but anyway, uh, but this type of grid design basically uh, is a way of organizing information. And I think the best thing to do is let's look at some examples here. And um, I've got some screenshots of some very Various websites here. This first one is Dan Benjamin's 5x5 network. And 5x5 is a um, basically his podcasting network. And go look them up. They're really interesting. They've got kind of these episodes that come out weekly in a talk show format um, from everything from web design to audiovisual production to you name it. And his website here, he's got a lot of information on it, and I'm talking a lot. They've got a lot of shows, a lot of episodes, a lot of links. And visually, even before I zoom in on this, you can see that there's a lot of order to this. And more or less, what I want you to look at in these things, and is, is, you also see this in print design with uh, magazine and newspaper layouts, is kind of this this column based approach. Okay, so you do have a grid in that you know you could you could look at this in a horizontal format and say that you have six shapes down here that are all rectangular, or you can also look at this in columns so you could look at this as a three column layout that way if you had a seventh show in negative space it wouldn't break that visual uh, continuity there it would still work and uh, let's zoom in on this so you can kind of see if I scroll up to the top you've got your uh, banner up here at the top of the logo and then you've got your links evenly spaced you've got a couple tables of information and then you get down to your three column layout down here and what's interesting is at the bottom we've have a lot of extra stray links and rather than just grouping all those into a long list um, Design-wise, this is divided into a six-column layout. So you have six columns of links here, and they are all divided orderly by you know categories of what those links you know pertain to. So anyway, this is an excellent use of grid design layout. Another one that's um, pretty obvious is this Tapbots website, and uh, Tapbots are a company they make um, iPhone applications. And at the top, you have a banner that kind of is subdivided into two um, columns visually because you kind of have this negative space and the logo information for this app, and then you have a screenshot. Uh, below that, down here, we've got a three-column layout, and let's zoom in on that. Uh, so we've got the three columns there, and this is very grid-like in that they're all the same height. And then at the bottom, we have we break into a four-column layout. So you'll see this a lot where um, where layouts can, can switch between sets of four or three, and you don't have to stick with one for the entire page. Uh, it all depends on the grouping of information that you're looking at. Uh, another one here, this is Things That Are Brown, which is a website design studio. And I think what's worth noting here is, and I think this is really interesting, uh, about the middle of the page after this banner here, uh, they break into a three-column layout. You have this who, what, how, the hire us, and read the brown blog. And you'll notice that these... Um, are not evenly spaced, that these are not equidistant columns, if you will. And I think that this is really important and really interesting because what this does is it creates uh, some visual interest to the page, uh, mainly what's going on here in the midsection, and it kind of contrasts what's going on in the top. You kind of have the, the logo, some negative space, and then your links, and then down here it just kind of visually um, you know, says the opposite and adds kind of a, um, a nice continuity to what you're looking at visually. Um, now, finally, the last thing we're going to look at, and I'm going to zoom on this because it's a long scrolling page and we'll zoom out in a second uh, this is a wine website for a vineyard and uh, I think this is exceptionally well done because not only is it a grid but their use of negative space um, their uh, differentiating blocks of type and images uh, with that negative space I've also heard this referred to as path uh, system design, where it kind of is leading your eye via a path through the page. And this does an excellent job at this. You have the logo, leads you right into the, the text about it and the image. And as you come down, each section leads into the next. You have your vineyard section down here. You have some news, history of wines. And it makes you visually, it, it compels you to keep reading and keep looking at the information. Uh, this is really interesting. Um, 
it's a six column or it's a yeah, six column layout, but it alternates between the image and the text. Um, you know, using those bottles with the long slender design is kind of an anchor for that. And it's exceptionally um, uh, designed and we'll zoom out here so you can kind of see some of it too. Uh, but anyway, excellent use of design. Uh, one other thing I do want to mention too is, um, let's go back to this first example. When we're talking about grids, we're talking specifically about columns. Well, the grid is not actually drawn onto the page. So you could kind of think of it like this. Let's say you're designing something and using a sheet of graph paper. Well, that's nice for anchoring um, and, and using kind of a guide approach to lining things up. But the grid is not always visible. In fact, most of the time it is not in the final design. And I think this is really important because that grid is implied by the negative space. So for instance, if you look at anything that is grid-like or column-like in structure, whether it be these little links for the shows up at the top, let's zoom in on those, the grid is defined by the negative space or this space that is not used for anything between the objects. If you didn't have that there, the grid doesn't have as much weight to it. Uh, same down here with these links. So the grid structure, column structure, these are, def they're, they're, it's an implied structure. It's not a literal grid. And so that's really important. Um, you don't actually have to draw a grid on there, but it is implicative of a grid. So um, in the next episode, we're going to move on here. I'm going to talk about a common framework that's used and we're going to get into the 960.gs system. So I will see you guys in the next episode.